Hi everyone, welcome to the Triassens Martial Art Channel, episode 3 of Internal in a Nutshell. Now, the content of this video, strictly speaking, should not be part of this new series that I've made called Internal in a Nutshell. However, because the content is going to be a follow-up on my latest video, which is episode 2 of Internal in a Nutshell, How to Spot Bad Xing Yi. Therefore, despite the content not exactly fitting the purpose of this new series, I've decided to include it in this series as episode 3. Now in this video, we're going to discuss a very important issue, which is when there's a discrepancy between the guideline or the classic text of a style, aka the law of certain martial art, versus certain influential person or aka an idol within the martial art community, when there's, when there's a discrepancy between the two, which one should we actually follow as a faithful traditional Chinese martial artist? So by now, my viewers should already know that recently I've made a video explaining how to spot bad Xing Yi, and the example that I've used belong to someone called Hai Yang, or in Chinese, Yang Hai. What I did not expect is that he apparently has a lot of fanboys and students and quite influential in the West, and these people all got pretty upset with me. It's almost like I opened a can of worm for myself. Now obviously, if you've been following my channel for a sufficient amount of time, you should know that I am not scared of opening cans of worms or to piss off people in the community. This channel's only sole purpose is to expose the truth and the factual analysis of Chinese martial art. It's aimed to misbust and debunk incorrect and misinformation. And in doing so, undoubtedly, I will be pissing off people, and I'm okay with that, as long as the truth will come out in the end. However, I've criticized much more famous masters such as Chen Xiaowang, and no doubt his fanboys did leave negative comments and all that, but it was nowhere near as big of a ripple as criticizing this guy called Hai Yang. So that is not to my expectation. But it's okay, it doesn't matter. This video, I'm going to address some of the criticism or bad argument that his supporters, fans, and students have made against my video. And I'll also provide examples to further strengthen my point of view from the previous video. And as always, I don't expect all my viewers to take my word as a holy grail, because nobody should. However, I am going to provide you with convincing evidence, both from experienced Xing Yi practitioners, manuscript, as well as the laws of physics, which no one can defy as long as you are living on this planet and in this universe. At the end of this video, you should be able to make up your own mind on whose side is more correct in this argument. So here you can see, I believe this guy, his student or at least a fanboy, has shared my video on the Xing Yi group in, on Facebook. And firstly, I'd like to say thank you for actually posting my video, because I actually don't post my videos on these um, social media. So the fact that you are posting it is going to give my video more views. So thank you so much for doing that. It's much appreciated. All right, now let's look at the kind of argument he's trying to make. So his first point is that I said before that the idea of keeping the elbow close to the ribs was wildly overemphasized, misunderstood, and here is a great example of that. Haiyang is not wrong by having the elbow out. So excuse me, who do you think you are to question the Xing Yi classical text which was written by its founder Li Luoneng and revised by other Xing Yi predecessors throughout the generation such as Guo Yunshen, uh, Liu Qilan, and so forth. They are the ones who've defined Xing Yi, founded Xing Yi, and decided on what is correct and what is incorrect. So who are you? to question the classical text. This is just frankly absurd. And in case you don't know, in the actual Xing Yi classical text, it's Quan Pu, right, where its forefather and founder has written the guideline on how to do Xing Yi, it clearly states that Liang Zhou Bu Li Lei, Liang Shou Bu Li Xin. Okay, what that basically means that the two elbows does not leave the ribs, and the two hands does not leave the heart. And personally, I found it quite shocking that anyone even dared to argue against the classical text. In essence, he's trying to say that 
what if written in a text is not that important, right? We should do Xing Yi however we want to rather than following the guidelines of our forefathers. That's quite frankly, it's just too hubris and egotistic. And then he says, the animal, which most people don't even do, shows the elbows away from the ropes all the time. Now, firstly, my original video was on the five elemental first. It was not on the animal. So just because the animal's elbow sticks out does not mean the five element first should also stick out. This is a classical straw man argument where they set up a straw man that they think they can't win in the argument and then they try to use that to replace the original argument. That's very stupid and it doesn't actually work to people who actually have a brain. And furthermore, it is actually incorrect to say that all animals have their elbows stick out. For example, I've seen plenty of Xingyi practitioners who does hu pu with the elbow in. They don't do hu pu like this. Some people do it like that, like the Wang Peisheng lineage, but a lot of the Xingyi lineage that I've met that's who pulls the elbow coming down. And again, Longxing, the dragon form, right? It's basically essentially a, a large P and pretty much the elbow is down as well. The same can be said for swallow, snake, chicken, eagle, and Thai, which I believe people translate into ostrich. So dragon, tiger, swallow, snake, eagle, Thai, aka ostrich, and chicken. That's seven that I count out of 12 that doesn't have elbow sticking out. So the better question is, does this guy know the 12 animals that he claimed that nobody else actually knows? So the better question is, does this guy actually know the 12 animals that he claimed most other people don't do? Based on his response, I would, my guess would be he, that he doesn't know the 12 animals. His second point is that Hai Yang has been influenced by the Xiang Xing Shu of Xue Dian, which is an awesome but modified version of Xing Yi, which changes the rule somewhat. Okay, so there has been a huge controversy surrounding Hai Yang's claim to be of the lineage of Xue Dian, but that's probably gonna go for another video. A lot of people in China, in a nutshell, discredit him from even having any relationship with the actual lineage of Xue Dian. But again, we're not gonna talk in details about that here. However, sorry to break it to this guy, but they're actually surviving photographs of Xue Dian doing five elemental first. And over here, you can see a few examples of such photo. And you can clearly see that when Xue Dian, the man himself, does five elemental first, his elbow is tucked in. It's not sticking out like Hai Yang is doing. So he can't even use Xue Dian as a scapegoat to legitimize his incorrect elbow alignment. Okay, then, then he says, finally, all these BS about structure and testing need to be thrown out as this idea of the way you receive force and the way that you transmit force exactly the same is just flat wrong. Otherwise, hooks, etc. shouldn't work, but they do. The proof is in the pudding, not the ingredient. Basically, if your technique knocks the opponent the F out, then you did it correctly. Again, who is he to question the method of training that was taught to us by, by forefathers of Xing Yi, Taiji, and Ba Gua? In all three internal styles, we basically believe that the way you structure is how you receive force and how you generate and transfer force to the other guy. And maybe this is a shock to him, but an actual correct hook has a very stable and ideal structure on the moment of contact. If you go to a decent boxer, you ask him to do a hook and stop at the moment of contact, and then you try to push on his fist, you realize that he is in a stable structure. And the fact that the hook has his elbow sticking out is because it has a horizontal circular traveling path, right? That's why the elbow is in line with the path of the fist, which is why it is a good structure base. But if you throw a vertical punch with the elbow sticking out, that's a different story. So just because a hook is fine with the elbow sticking out, doesn't mean a zuan quan is okay with the elbow sticking out. Those are two completely different things, and it's another attempt this guy tried to use as a straw man argument, because he has no real argument to back himself up. Okay, next let's look at some comments from that post. The first guy says, 
I don't know how you can spot bashing E when you don't practice it, but have a lot of friends that do. That's hilarious. Well, based on your opinion, then no sport commentator who have never been a champion of the sport should have the right to commentate on said sport. In fact, I even know there are professional sport coaches, for example, in the Chinese national sport team, who don't actually do the sport that they are coaching. Okay, they can coach because they have experience on how to train athletes. You don't actually have to be a champion or even an athlete of that state sport to train to be a coach of that sport as long as you understand the mechanic behind that sport. Understanding how the mechanic work and how to teach someone doesn't mean you have to be able to physically be good at it. And secondly, all three internal martial arts share the same principles. Now this is not me saying, it's called according to the very famous Sun Lu Tang. So if you disagree with this, you have to take it up against him. Okay, he said three internal styles have the same fundamental mechanic with different execution. So even though I don't do Xing Yi, I have done a lot of Tai Chi and Yi Quan, which is a style substyle that divided and came out of Xing Yi. So that sort of gave me enough understanding on internal style overall. And furthermore, like I've said, I have many friends who are very well established Xing Yi practitioners within the community and are well respected. Okay. So just because I don't practice them myself, that doesn't mean I don't spend time with them and listening to what they say about how to train. So therefore, I do happen to know what's correct and incorrect Xing Yi. I don't have to be able to physically do it myself to be able to tell these things. And it's not like I'm here trying to explain something unique to Xing Yi and only a high level Xing Yi master could understand. For example, Hu Bao Lei Yin. Okay, I'm not trying to attempt to explain anything of that caliber. Instead, I'm here talking about something that every single basic Xing Yi practitioner should understand from day one. Furthermore, this isn't only unique to Xing Yi. Instead, it is part of the basic principle and laws of physics. Even people who doesn't know martial art should know that when you have a supporting structure, the more they are in line with one another, for example, you have two, you have three joints, shoulder, elbow, and, and hand first. If you have them all in one line that has a base structural support, then you're having a skill, assuming that your support and your pressure is coming in a linear fashion. Of course, it's coming in a circular fashion, that's a completely different story. But when you apply force to one end of something and you want to transfer to the other end, the most optimized structure to get that support, to transfer that type of power, is by having it all in one straight line. Which is the very same reason why we see buildings are both up straight. The pillars, supporting pillars of any building is up straight. Right now someone's gonna to try to argue that their building was a was a curved surface, etc. But the supporting pillar are always up straight. Your hand when punching somebody acts the same way as the supporting pillar. And it had to be ideally straight. That is simply the laws of physics. I don't need to be a Xing Yi master to understand the basic laws of physics, nor do I need to be a Xing Yi master to spot someone who's disobeying the laws of physics and think that the laws of physics does not apply to them. And what is truly sad about all the negative comments that I've got is the fact that none of them are willing to actually engage in a technical discussion about the laws of physics and whether or not sticking the elbow out provide a better structure support than having your elbow tucked in. Because if any of them actually have tangible evidence in terms of physics on why the elbow in the linear punch should be sticking out, then I am willing to engage in a technical discussion about it and see whether or not their evidence and viewpoint holds any water. But instead, up to this point, all those Negative com has been saying is to discredit the fact that I don't do Xing Yi, and others that say that Bill Hai Yang is like a god in Xing Yi community. Therefore, whatever he does is good. In fact, you know, pretty much his dump must also taste good as well. It doesn't stink. Exaggeration, but that's pretty much the type of mentality they are having. And what all these response tells me is that this entire community, at least a good portion of it, are not treating martial art like a practical set of skill where practical ability and laws of physics should have 
dominance over everything else. Instead, they are treating internal martial art like a religion. They're worshipping an idol almost like a religious figure and anything he do is correct. They do not have. They do not think about whether or not what he say or preach or practice actually makes sense in a practical perspective. And just in case someone out there is going to twist what I said about supporting pillar and turn it into some other argument, let me just clarify, okay? When the force is going straight, then obviously the elbow will need to be behind the punch that is going forward. But depending on the height of your punch with the shoulder height, rib height, then obviously the elbow would have to make adjustment. In which case, if you look from the side, then the elbow would probably be curved this way. And that is the best stretch you will get if you are trying to punch somebody's stomach in a straight punch. It's still, so the fact that the elbow bends downwards, it's not the same as the elbow bending outwards, all right? But when you bend the elbow downwards, you are still aligning your arm to your core body and therefore uh, allowing you to lend the maximum amount of support on the rest of your body. When the elbow bends sideways, that's a completely different story. Same with the Zuan Quan when going upwards, okay? Sure, the elbow isn't forming a straight line to the foot because why? It's not a bloody straight punch. It's an upwards uppercut type of punch. However, the elbow is directly behind the path that the punch is traveling. If the punch is traveling in the diagonally elevation type of path, then the elbow is traveling on the exact same path as the punch. It does not travel on a different path, right? If, I, if I'm punching Zuan Quan like this, the elbow traveling in one path, first traveling in another path. But if I align them like this, then both are traveling in one path, okay? So that is a more detailed description of the principles of physics when analyzing these few punches in Xin Yi. So next guy says, you know, I have never managed to get through a whole video from this guy. I once tried and never get those five plus minutes back. Well, you know what? When I was 12 years old, I couldn't get through an entire lecture on quantum mechanics. But does that mean quantum mechanic lecture was bad? That it's pointless? It's incorrect? No, it just means I was too naive to appreciate the knowledge that was shared by the professor at the time. I know, I mean no means saying that I'm a professor level martial artist. But just because you can't get through my video, it doesn't invalidate my video. Right? Quite frankly, it most likely means your understanding is not high enough to actually understand what I'm trying to say. And quite frankly, in martial art, any other knowledge I guess, if your understanding is of a lower level, then there's no way you can appreciate someone from a higher level until the time that you elevate yourself. So maybe come back in 10 years and my video will actually make sense to you. Because the next line, he says, he is mixing up the Shenfa of Xing Yi with Wing Chun. Hai Yang is showing the independent usage of the arm, not how the combined with overall body mechanic. Well, you see, this guy is actually trying to make a genuine argument on this topic. He's the first guy in this entire post. Could use for that. However, I would say, whether you are trying to show the whole body mechanic or you're only showing the arm, right? The position of the elbow should not change. It makes no sense that when you're doing your whole body, you're always tucked in, but when you're doing your arm, you're always sticking out, okay? If you've been training with your elbow sticking in the whole time, then this becomes a habit, okay? No matter what, what you do, single arm, full body, step, no step, even if I wake you up in the middle of the night, your elbow will be tucked in because that's how you train. The very fact that Hai Yang is doing with elbow sticking out only can suggest that that elbow tucking in isn't something he believes in. So therefore, even though he's trying to have a valid discussion slash argument, I don't think his point stands. Here's another Hai Yang fanboy or student. He says, no, you enlighten us. Who the F are you? Well, here might be a shocker to your lack of logic, but I am merely citing what is said in the Xing Yi classic backed up by its founder and all its predecessors. I don't need to be someone important to cite pre-established theory and classical text. However, Hai Yang and your lot who support him, his fanboys, you are trying to undermine the Xing Yi classic by saying the elbow doesn't have to stick to the rib. So, you have to show who the F are you to question the classic. So, I'm not important here, but your qualification is actually what is important. Because if your qualification doesn't outshine those of Li Luoneng, Guo Yunshen, uh, Liu, Liu Qilan, and so forth, then quite frankly, you have no right to disregard the Xing Yi classic and 
its requirements on how to train Xing Yi. The logic is very simple here. Okay, now let's move on to my YouTube channel's comment that I've seen from people who actually watches my videos. So the first comment I got was from someone who said he unsubscribed. You know, that's okay for me. If, you don't, if you're not willing to accept fact and laws of physics, rather you prefer to worship an idol even though he breaks the laws of physics in a very wrong way, then I guess my channel isn't meant for you. I wish you all the best, but I'm not gonna not say what I believe to be the truth just to keep or to please my viewers. That is not the purpose of my channel. So while I do want more subscriptions and more views, I'm not gonna compromise my personal stance in exposing the truth and combat misinformation. The next is from someone called Cynical Nutcase. Ouch, now you have really moved out onto deep waters, my friend. This gent is highly respected in the internal martial community. Pissing off half of this community is not wise move. Personally, I feel that you are a bit disingenuous by isolating a club and not showing his standard Wu Xing Quan. You should address his common teaching and not a specific training method. It's not a fair thing to do. And I say this because I have enjoyed and respected your work so far. I would suggest that anyone watching this take a look at his other club and compare them. What is said here does not necessarily represent how he normally practice and teach. Anyway, I still subscribe and watch your future videos. Cheers. So here's a a pretty factual guy, you know, he doesn't agree with my point, but he does appreciate my videos, but that's beside the point. So what he's trying to say is that Haiyang only has his elbow sticking out in this video, but not in his other videos. So firstly, my video on how to spot Bai Xing Yi refer only to this video in question where his elbow is sticking out. My video wasn't titled Haiyang is a Bai Xing Yi practitioner. I merely saying how to spot Bad Xing Yi. So whatever he did in this video that I link in my video and criticized is how you spot Bad Xing Yi. If you see a Xing Yi practitioner with elbow sticking out, that is bad. So my video wasn't intended as a character assassination of Haiyang himself as a person, but what he was showing in this video. So that's point number one. Point number two, I failed to see how someone who usually doesn't have his elbow sticking out, will suddenly have his elbow sticking out for this one particular video. Even if he were showing Wu Xing Quan five five first with single hand draw, you know, or without the body mechanic like some other people suggest, it still don't give any excuses or legitimized reason to have his elbow sticking out here. And on top of that, someone else actually linked me a Q&A session of Hai Yang where somebody asked him about whether the elbow should stick to the body. And here is what he says. Well, the idea of elbows never leaving the flanks is a very common misperception caused by translation. It is just the impossible to never let the elbows leave the flanks. Actually, in Chinese language, zhou bu li lei which translates to elbow do not leave the rib cage can mean many things. For example, elbows have to be close to the rib cage so that the rib cage area can be protected. During formal practice, when the elbows get close to the elbow uh, rib cage, you will be naturally forced to move the body more. So, no matter what, zhou bu li lei does not mean that elbows should not leave the flanks. In the Chinese language, very often, many words are removed from a term to make it sound phonetically pleasant. So, the flanks should actually be written as the entire space in the vicinity of the, of the rib cage, not just the physical rib cage. And if you add that, to the Facebook student slash fanboy of Haiyang, where he insists that everyone else has been overemphasizing on the elbow not leaving the rib and that shouldn't be important, then you can see what is Haiyang and his group's standpoint on the position of the elbow. And that pretty much means that the elbow issue in this video I criticized can't be an isolated case or an accident. That is something that branch of people actually believes in. As to whether he is respected by the community is irrelevant to my video. And you know, 
whether I'm gonna piss off half the community, I frankly don't care. Okay, it's not like I'm living off half of the internet, internet internal martial community. Obviously, by doing this, if I really piss a lot of people, it might make my future endeavor more difficult if I were to teach in other places. But I don't really care about that. My video is about providing the fact, and that's it. Anything that will compromise the factual evidence of my video would be ignored. Because quite frankly, within this martial community, whether it's in the overseas or in China, too many people are too scared to step on other people's toes. Which is why everyone always on the surface say everyone else is great teacher, good teacher, skillful master, great fighter. Even though deep down inside, most of them don't believe that at all. But they keep saying that in front of people, which has led to an unfortunate situation where no one else can tell who's good and who's bad. And therefore, there's so much fraud and disingenuous practitioners populating the Chinese martial arts scene. And that as a result has caused the Chinese martial arts to be going downhill for the past few decades to a point where Xu Xiaodong comes up and does whatever he wants and no one has the ability to put him in his place. And that is the sole purpose of my channel, is to stop being like the rest of the Chinese martial arts community where everyone just praises everyone else so that they can each puff each other up and all re reap the benefits of a good reputation. Instead, I would like to create a channel where you can see the real fact behind all these people who's actually good and who is actually not that good and just have inflated reputation. Obviously, I'm not a god in this community, so you shouldn't take my word for granted. However, whenever I criticize someone, I will provide evidence which is based on factual evidence and the laws of physics. So ultimately, you need to make a decision whether you're going to trust an inflated reputation or should you trust the laws of physics. Okay, then that same person uh, talk about something else which almost opened another can of worms. He basically said that if I ask Byron Jacob, he will say nothing bad about Hai Yang. And he's based on the fact that Byron Jacobs recently had an interview with Hai Yang and therefore to him, Byron Jacob must wholeheartedly endorse Hai Yang's Xing Yi. And when I suggested that people don't always express their true belief and intention in public, then someone else went and confronted Byron on his own video's comment section, the video that he actually interviewed Hai Yang, and asked him about his opinion on Hai Yang. Now firstly, this is pretty stupid. Excuse my harsh language, but it is pretty stupid because I'm not gonna put, put, put word in Byron's mouth. I'm not gonna make speculation on his opinion of Hai Yang, but no matter who it is, as long as they are not stupid, they're not going to say something bad about a person under the video where they just interviewed that person. So by asking him, in conversation of that video, it literally proves nothing. Okay, I'm not saying whether Byron is pro Hai Yang or against Hai Yang's Xing Yi ability, but that action of asking him in that comment section, it proves nothing and shouldn't be used as any type of evidence. So I don't want to drag Byron into this piece of mess. So let's just settle this whole, what Byron thinks with a very simple evidence. Here, you can see an extract of a video of his Ma, Xing Yi master, Master Di Guoyong, teaching at the Beijing University. And here's what he had to say about the position of the elbow.
So from here, I think there's no reason to argue any further on what would be Byron's position on whether the elbow should be tucked in or sticking out. And you guys should all just leave him alone and leave him out of this. This drama doesn't exactly concern him. And furthermore, I don't have to consult him every time when I make a video, even if it's about Xin Yi. However, we do talk privately about what we think about various things, but those are private matters between us, and I'm not going to share that in public. Okay, so now that we've got all the social media comments and replies from me out of the way, let's look at the heart of the problem. So when there is a person who's been idolized by the community with supposedly good reputation and what he preaches contradicts the actual classical text and what's used as a guideline as a measurement for certain style, which side should you pick? Now firstly, I don't even understand why Haiyang is widely respected by the overseas international, I mean the overseas internal martial community. I quite don't understand that, okay? Um, generally, in my, in my understanding, if a person is to be respected, generally one of two things should happen. A, he's an accomplished fighter, he defeats a lot of noteworthy opponents. For example, I will never argue boxing with Mike Tyson, or Floyd Mayweather, or Muhammad Ali. Why? Because they have defeated top fighters during their prime. And therefore, they're using the action, they've proven that whatever they do is highly functional and works great. Okay, but quite frankly, I don't know of any fight record from Haiyang, whether it is in the ring, officially, or unofficial challenge. In fact, I know him to have evaded challenges and also have called police when people went to his school looking to challenge him. Okay, again, this video isn't about this drama which should be served for some other videos such as my fact or fiction section so we're not going to detail here but the point is I don't know, I'm not aware of any fighting accomplishment from him if you guys know any solid evidence that he actually defeated some noteworthy opponents uh, you're welcome to let me know and I'll basically check up on, on those but as far as I know at the moment he has no accomplishment when it comes to fighting which leaves us with only one option which is whether or not his theory of training is correct because of course not everyone is born to be a good fighter but just because you can't fight well doesn't mean what you believe teach and preach is incorrect okay but if you can't fight if you can't prove yourself through fighting then what you preach and teach need to be in line with what is understood as the correct understanding and guideline of the overall style that you are teaching and quite frankly in this particular case his teaching contradict to the Xing Yi classic as well as other well-respected and recognized masters such as another well-recognized and famous Xing Yi master Master Di Guoyong whose video we have played just now indicating his standpoint on where the elbow should be and when there's a discrepancy like this, there's only one thing left for us to do. That is, if you are someone with factual thinking and logic analysis, it's basically to look at this problem from a physics perspective. Now, Master Di Guoyong already mentioned in his part of the video that if you don't understand elbow, you can put your hand onto a wall and push yourself against the wall and see do you have more power this way or do you have more power this way? And that should settle the debate. Now I'm going to tell you another version of the same concept. Okay, We all know, I hope so, that Xin Yi come from speed. And therefore the most fundamental Xin Yi motion, aka the five elemental first, should be in line with how people used to handle a large spear. And anyone who has ever handled an actual large spear in their life would know automatically that you cannot stick your elbows out. But in case you don't know what a large spear is, here is an example. So this is a large spear that I used to practice many moons ago. I no longer do it, so this isn't uh, my way of flexing. I'm completely out of practice when it comes to large spear, but just to show you that I have done it and know what I'm talking about. Okay, so see the length of the spear from here all the way 
to here. See, so this is the length of this sphere. And the reason that you see three sticks tied together is because I don't have a thicker wood and therefore I had to take three of these, tie them together to have the correct weight. Obviously my, my launcher is too small for maneuvering this, so I'm going to use a shorter stick, but it will be the same principle. So the reason I emphasize on the length and the thickness of the large spear is because if your stick or spear or pole is too small, short and light, then no matter how you hold it, it doesn't matter because the weight isn't enough for you to force you into the most optimized structure. However, when you're handling a spear as large as the one I just shown you, then due to its weight and length which add on to the amount of stress you have on your hand, you are forced into having the most optimized way of holding it. And if you were to hold a large spear, not like this, but you know, for filming purposes, I have to use a shorter stick. If you were to hold it in a sandy shoe position, you immediately see that if you hold your elbows out, it's going to be very, very tiring. Okay, that's the first thing. Second thing, let's talk about stabbing the spear. So if I have a spear here and I'm stabbing it out, okay, if you stab it with an elbow sticking out, you will make it notice that firstly, the tip becomes harder to focus due to the elbow sticking out as opposed to my elbow sticking in, then it's much easier to control exactly where the point is going, the accuracy of it is altered by the position of the elbow. And secondly, if you actually have a, a large spear and you try to go through here, you will see that when your elbow is in and tucked next to your, your ribs, you can hold the stick far more efficiently than like this. If you hold a large spear like this, you get tired much faster than if you hold it with the elbow tucked in. And this motion of stabbing the spear forward arguably is where Xingyi's Feng Quan originates from. Okay? So that is why in Feng Quan, you don't stick your elbows out. And in case you're wondering now, sure, using a spear, you want to hold your elbows in for better optimized weight distribution on holding a heavy weapon. Why is it important? Now why is it important to do Beng Quan with the elbow in as well instead of sticking out? Again, the answer is in the laws of physics. If your punch is going straight, okay, then you want all your force to be as close to the ideal path of trajectory as possible. Meaning, if my fist coming out tucking next to my ribs, and my elbow is directly behind my fist, and the entire motion of the fist is one line forward, then it has the maximum potential for maximum energy transference and impact, aka okay, you hit the hardest. The moment you do a punch like this, and your elbow is sticking out, then first you're gonna mess up with the trajectory of your fist. Your fist is gonna go wonky instead of in a very ideal straight line. Secondly, the power you're coming from your body, and to go that way, and then trying to go forward, instead of focusing only forward. So by the law of physics, you can be able to see that it's a far less efficient way to generate and transfer power when you want to do a straight punch. Now someone back in the, on the Facebook was arguing about a hook, right? A hook, you're throwing this way, okay? And in this circular horizontal trajectory, the elbow still is falling directly behind the point of impact, right? So when I'm doing this punch, my elbow is not going this way, it's not going th this way, it's not doing this, and it's not doing that. It's still in the ideal position. And if I were to let somebody push my fist like this, I would still have a very solid structure. So different punch from different angle and different direction have a different ideal structure. When it comes to a straight punch, the elbow is tucked in when it comes to Xing Yi at least. Another example we can see is when you take the spear and you thrust upward, right? This is almost the same action as Zuan Quan, right? Although, there are no exact evidence of exactly which of the spear movements influence the five elemental first, but it's commonly believed that Zuan Quan basically comes from this action in the spear. And in doing so again, if you hold a big spear, you do this, stick your elbow out, and see how comfortable that is, and how accurate your, your tip actually is, Versus if you tuck your, both of your elbows in, and you should be able to immediately see the difference. And if that's not obvious enough, we can borrow the same 
concept from Master Di Guoyu, right? You take your, your spear, you push it against the wall, and you try to push into the wall and see do you have better force this way or better force with your elbow tucked in. Same here. It's, a bit, it's more comfortable to push it like this or to push it like that. You see what actually gives you more control, more, stable, more stability, and allow your body to really drive into the wall as opposed to doing this or doing that versus doing this. And the answer should be pretty obvious to you. And lastly, let's look at where P chuan potentially comes from, right? So P chuan is believed to come from P of the spear as well. I have my light here, so I can't really do it too well. But again, if you hold up your elbow here, try to P down like this, versus having your elbow sticking in and P like that. And you can immediately see which one has a better result. So by this point, it should be obvious to you why she need have his elbow tucked in and why does it say that the elbow does not leave the rib? Okay, and, and obviously elbow not leaving the rib doesn't mean your elbow is always on the rib. It just means that the elbow always starts right next to the rib and when it goes forward, it's in the same trajectory as if we're leaving the rib. Rather than starting from here, when we do a punch, it actually goes outside. That is bad energy conservation. And this certainly doesn't mean what Hai Yang was trying to say in his Q&A session where when elbow doesn't leave the rib, doesn't literally mean you can't leave the rib, it just means you are in the vicinity. If it only had to be in the vicinity, there's really no need to even write that in the manuscript, okay? Because no style fight like this. And according to what Hai Yang was doing, that anything in this whole range is part of the vicinity, then this entire piece of writing can be ignored. You know other martial art fight with the elbow over here. So every martial art essentially based on that definition is having the elbow not leaving the rib. And, th and therefore Xin wouldn't need to specifically write about this because everyone is doing it already. Okay, so that simply doesn't make sense. Now some of you might start to wonder what about Yi Quan? Yi Quan came from Xin Yi, but it clearly doesn't touch the rib, right? It has this hand here and it punches like this too. So that I will cover in my next video in this series of internal international is to talk about why each one has a different elbow position than Xing Yi and, and how the laws of physics and biomechanics works differently for each one than it is for Xing Yi. And lastly, I would like to say that if Hai Yang is unhappy with everything that I've said, then I am willing to put my hand where my mouth is against him. If he wants to prove to me that he's always thinking out is the way to go, then we can arrange a meetup once the pandemic's over. Ideally, in China, I used to go back there when there's no pandemic once a year for three months. And then we can basically settle this in the good old Chinese martial art way. Whereas he can stay in his position, we always sticking out, I'll apply a force and he how well he absorbs that force. If you think this is too civilized, we can also fight it out. However, I do believe that fighting out doesn't actually prove points of physics. It just proves who's the better fighter. But if you want to do that, I'll definitely oblige. Okay? And I will never dodge a challenge like he did with Li Jinghua. Okay, so hopefully this video has made sense to you and hopefully you've learned something more about why Xin Yi doesn't have his elbow sticking out. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe, click on the bell icon to get updated. And shout out to all my Patreon supporters, thank you guys for so much for your support. And if you can support me on Patreon, greatly appreciate it. And lastly, we're still in the pandemic, so wash your hands, sanitize yourself, wear your mask, keep your social distance, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Trazen's Martial Art Channel.